Now, you come from humble beginnings. Tell us about your childhood. Yeah, so I was born while my mother was in prison. I have an identical twin brother, so mm. obviously both of us were born at the same time. And uh, so we immediately became wards of the court and went into foster care. And so we grew up in a foster home. So they moved from the Bay Area to far northern California. So I'm one of 350 children who went through that home. So I was adopted in the home, but mm -hmm. my brothers and sisters, a long-term care, short-term care, guardianship. And, and so we had a, a unique experience because we moved to a very non-diverse environment. So for the vast majority of the time that I was in school, I was the, me and my brother were the only African-Americans in our school. So it was pretty, pretty interesting. Wow, but you and your brother had each other. We had each other, always have. That's a blessing. Yeah. You made history becoming the president of Sacramento State University. Yeah, yeah. That was awesome. Tell me about that journey for you. Well, you know, the thing is, I've always planned to be in this role. Mm -hmm. So I went off to, to college at Sacramento State and I immediately fell in love with the campus. And so I'm the president of the campus that I went to school at. Exactly. Right, which is amazing. Woo! So. <laughs> How do you feel now that you achieved that? I, you know, I feel great because I, by the time I was in my, my sophomore year of college, I was very involved on, on campus and student life, and I was obnoxious mm. about telling every single person that I was going to be the president of Sacramento State. Mm. And so I meet people all the time who are like, I remember when you said that. <laughs> you said it. You said it. And, but that's truly what I've been working for this whole time, not because of the title, mm -hmm. but because of the impact that you can have on other people's lives. Wow. Yeah. So... How do you, you know, go about using your background, your story, and your experience from the school to help others that's in the school? So how I do it is I, I think about what it was like being myself in college. So my, my mm -hmm. first year in college was I did pretty well. I had pretty good grades. And then my adopted father, he went to prison. He later died in prison. So I went from having support to essentially not having any real support. And then, you know, my mom, she was losing the house. So there was a lot going on at the time. So I would go two days, sometimes three days at a time without eating. Wow. I would like scrounge up change off the ground. And there was a Taco Bell near campus that you could go to. You could get a, a cup of water and a bean burrito for 69 cents. And so that's what I would do. And mm -hmm. so if there was an event on campus that had food or pizza, like I would go to and I learned about all sorts of things that I didn't care about yeah. because I was just trying <laughs> to eat, right? But you know, I was staying in my car for a period of time, my brother's garage, my family, you know, tried to help me, my twin brother, he was the student body president of the university and he was living in his office because he was homeless. So what I do, I try to think about what was it like being a student in the struggles that many of our students go through. Right. And I want to make, basically create an experience where they don't have to go through what I went through. Mm, I'm sure <laughs> that that makes a huge difference for them as yeah. well, being yeah. able to have your support and knowing what people can go through and being the example that they can get through it. Tell us about your new initiative that you're launching this fall. Yeah, so this fall we are launching the first ever in the nation, a black honors college. Oh. So, yes. Well, all right. <laughs> so and it's an honors college that's specifically designed to serve students who are interested in black history, life, and culture. So we can't be an HBCU, we weren't founded in time, right? But we can be everything but the historical part. And so we've set aside 6,000 square feet of space in the center of our campus. We've uh, hired eight different staff members to work with the students, including a dean of students, faculty members who have a demonstrated record of success in teaching and serving black students. So it's an institution within the institution that's specifically designed to serve black students. Mm. I'm sure great, great, great things is going to come from that. Yeah. Steered by you. What is the hope for students that you want them to take away from your story? What would you like them to take away from it? Well, I want them to feel a sense of motivation. You know, I have a lot of students who come up to me and say, hey, I heard that you are, you know, a former foster child or you're impacted by the, the prison system or that you're first generation college student or low income or you're a boxer, right? They hear all these different things. And one of the best things is when they come up to you and say like, hey, just so you know, I heard about your story and about how you struggle with food and housing. And I want you to know that right now, I'm sleeping in my car. But when I heard your story, mm. I said, if he can do it, then Ooh. I can do it. Yes. And yes. I want to be a motivation. And, and that's what I hear from the students. And so the experience that I want them to have is if I was to say like, what is one word I want them to walk away with? Dignity. Mm -hmm. Because too often in K-12 education, 
our students, particularly our students of color, they're treated with distrust, right. disdain, and disregard. They're suspended, they're expelled, they're placed in special education when they don't need the services. And so what I want them to have at my campus is where they come to Sacramento State, we're going to celebrate their brilliance, their mm -hmm. morality, but most importantly, their dignity. Come on, they got the right one. If you like this video, smash that like button and subscribe to the Jennifer Hudson Show YouTube channel. Check your local listings or visit JenniferHudsonShow.com to see when you can watch four episodes in your area. And don't forget to sign up for the newsletter.